the great Russian composer Mussorgsky composed his enduring piece, Pictures at an Exhibition, in 1874. It depicts a tour through an art collection. And now, Boston's Copley Society of Art and the Boston Symphony Orchestra have turned that concept completely around. They asked artists to paint pictures based on the music. Here, many of them tell us what in the music inspired them. I think it's a great collaboration. I mean, I love the whole idea behind the symphony that, you know, it was a person walking through an exhibition. The music came inspired by art, and so we're flipping it around and, do, and creating art inspired by the music. This painting is based on a particular piece within the pictures in an exhibition. Uh, called the Garden of the Tuileries. It's very jagged. There's a lot of arpeggios and uh, a lot of color, a lot of action. I grew up with Russian music. Russian music is very evocative. It's rooted in spiritual and uh, fairy tales. And the music uh, has the kind of scurrying uh, quality uh, to it that uh, I visualize like this. So this was an interesting challenge for me to, to actually paint to the music, slowly and kind of quietly, and then as the music began to change, then I found that my, my actions changed with the music, forgetting everything else and letting the music really take me. I just listened to it over and over again. It did definitely sink in, I think. It was sort of a, a seeping in of whatever the music was trying to say. And then my own interpretation. I needed to create the, the darkness of the crypt. I absorbed the message and then I went for almost its opposite. I want to create the, the positive side of it, thinking that this was at the base of Mussorgsky's thought when he composed that movement. This piece is based on um, with the dead in a dead language. While listening to that particular part of the piece, the music was very, um, it wasn't really of this world, so it's creating something that uh, gave the, the feeling of being somewhere else, and it also has that idea of death. The particular promenade that I chose, the turmoil, I thought roiling surf. When waves are crashing on the shore, there's a surge, there's a buildup, and then there's an explosion on the shore. And that same thing sort of happens in music. You have this composition that repeats, there's a variation on a theme. What the Copley Society has done is groundbreaking for today's art world, um, but at the same time, it's really revisiting the history of what it means to communicate as an artist, and I'm very happy to be part of it. Joining me now are Susan Redgate of the Copley Society of Art, which curated a show of the works now on view at Symphony Hall, and Anthony Fogg of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, which will perform pictures this Friday and Saturday. Welcome. Thank you. So, Tony, give us a little bit of background uh, of the music and how it came to be. It's, it's fairly heartbreaking. Mussorgsky was writing about, you know, as I mentioned, it was a, he composed a piece as a tour through an art collection, but it was really mindful of his friend who had passed away. Uh, Mussorgsky was a great friend of the Russian artist and architect uh, Victor Hartmann. And Hartmann died rather suddenly in uh, 1873. And the following year, Mussorgsky and some of his friends decided to organize an exhibit of his work and uh, they brought together a couple of hundred pieces of Hartmann and Mussorgsky was so fired and inspired by this that he decided to to write a work as a, a type of remembrance uh, to, to Hartmann and so he created a piano work um, 
which for a long time was actually called Hartman while he was writing it, but he later re retitled it Pictures at an Exhibition. And it's a set of, uh, of miniatures of, of about te 10 different character pieces which are drawn on, ins inspired by the images of Hartman, and between them uh, is a connecting, what's called a promenade, and it's meant to give the sense of an observer walking from one piece to another and then taking it in. It's, it's an amazing piece. It was unpublished for many years and has had a rather checkered history in terms of its, its, uh, its publishing and so on, but it's become the source of inspiration for many, many other creative artists. And, and, it, and let me bring Susan in here. Many of the artists, I had spoken to them all to, to put together this piece, and many of the artists told me that this was so unconventional, they'd never worked like this, they'd never been asked to listen to a piece of music and be inspired by it. So what was the genesis of this show? Well, we decided that um, we have 380 artists in the Copley Society, and uh, why not uh, give them an opportunity to create in, and complement Mazursky's music and um, uh, take the challenge? And 150 of them did. What kind of energy did you see come out of it? Because I was pretty fascinated. They all had sort of were a little bit doe-eyed by uh, their revelations, <laughs> and especially the day we all had we had them all at Symphony Hall, and they were able to talk to each other about their experiences. Uh -huh. There was a, a particular energy there. It was a, a lovely energy. Um, it was synergy, really. The artists uh, were delighted to be communicating with one another. They're usually working alone. Um, and then to, uh, as a member of the Copley Society, work on something that the Copley Society uh, was inspired and the, this wonderful tradition with Boston Symphony Hall, a hundred-year-old organization, and our 100-year-old organization, there just was an esprit de corps that happened as a result. <laughs> and Tony, you can see these pictures every day because they're at Symphony Hall where your office is. Have you been sort of surprised by how the music came into being on the canvas here in each of these cases? I am, and I was, I, I had a sneak preview of, uh, of your interview with the, the various artists, Jared, and I was curious to hear the way in which they were, were inspired. Some of them have, have quite literally tried to represent the imagery that uh, is depicted in the music in their own painting, and others have done a far more uh, reflective um, approach. But it's uh, really fascinating to see them all. And I'm sure our audiences over this weekend will, will be looking at them in a completely different way after having heard the performance of, of this work with the Boston Symphony. And we're seeing some of the pieces here, some that we had in the piece, and, and some of the others that are on view right now. Mm -hmm. Susan, you had 125 submissions, but only about 30 artists who actually were able to show at Symphony Hall, exactly. uh, including this one, which I remember distinctly. Uh -huh. uh, how, how was the show juried? How did these 30 get selected? Well, uh, we invited uh, John Kirby from Boston Art and Ron Della Chiesa from, oh, GBH from GBH because of his knowledge of music and his um, empathy with music. His father happened to be an artist. So those uh, two gentlemen sat in the Copley Society and viewed the 150 submissions we had and hand selected the artwork in conjunction with the music that they were hearing. Right. So it was an exciting process. And quickly, Tony, the, the, the concerts are this Friday and Saturday? Yes, they're, they're great concerts. They'll be conducted by Oliver Nusson, who is a very prominent English composer and conductor. And uh, Ollie's been inspired by Mussorgsky's music for all of his life. And so he's put together a fascinating programming, a program combining two of his own works, Violin Concerto and some settings of poems by Whitman and a Another symphony by Mayaskovsky. So it's, it'll be a fascinating evening all around. All right. Well, I should mention mm -hmm. that the pictures are on view through Saturday, right? Saturday, yes. Or the 13th. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the concerts are Friday and Saturday. And many of them are still for sale as well. Oh, so. thank you. Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Susan Redgrave, uh, Tony Fogg, thank you so much. Okay. Pleasure. All right. And that is it for Greater Boston. Later this week, the big new idea in housing that's only 300 square feet. You might sacrifice space, but what you gain is your own little living area. So you're not living with roommates. It's your apartment. And since it's not big, you don't have to spend a lot of money on furnishings.
We'll look at the push for micro apartments in Boston on Thursday. And tomorrow, writer Casey Sherman joins us on his new book about the mafia man whose brutality had no bounds, Joseph the Animal Barboza. That's tomorrow on Greater Boston. I'm Jared Bowen. Thanks for watching.